Welcome to the Farming Without the Bank podcast, the show with a no BS approach to money, hosted by a farm strategy expert and authorized IBC practitioner. Join us as we get real and expose the flaws of traditional financial institutions in order to help farmers take control of their finances, create peace of mind, grow their wealth, and leave a legacy. Now, here's your host, Mary Jo Ehrman. Hello, and welcome to today's podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate it once again. If you guys would love to leave a review, please do so. I would appreciate that. I would also appreciate it if you shared this information with others. Okay, today I might get a little bit on a rant. I might. So, forewarning. If you get annoyed, shut it off. I apologize. But you know what? We are in, like, so A, I'm really sick and tired about hearing kind of about what's going on in the economy and whatever, but there are so many angry people. Like, I think people are more angry right now than normal. Am I the only one feeling this or or seeing it or hearing it? I don't know, but it is just angriness everywhere. The keyboard warriors are out at full force. So today we're going to talk about negative Nellies and fun suckers, right? So I had a conference in Bismarck a few years ago. And whenever I put on a conference, I always like to end the day with something comical, something funny, something uplifting, a speaker that does those sort of things. Because let's be honest, if you're at a conference of mine, we're talking about money and death all day. It is a lot. And it's just nice to end the day feeling a little bit refreshed rather than being like, oh my gosh. And I don't know why people that put conferences on don't do that more often. Instead, they're like, all right, let's just hammer you with information. And the very last speaker of the day is going to be more information. And you go back to your room, your hotel room, or you leave the conference and you are just exhausted. It's just nice to leave the day or leave the conference on a really good note. So the lady that I had speaking um, was talking about fun suckers and She was saying how, you know, she had this job and she'd go in every day and the lady at the front desk would be like, God morning. And we all have those people in our life, right? If you have something great happening, they had something better happen. They can't be excited for you. They're like, oh yeah, well, you know, when I did this or you think that's bad and then they have a worse story, right? Nobody can ever just say, oh my gosh, that's terrible, And we're all good at it a little bit, being a little bit of a fun sucker. But once you recognize the fun sucker, (laughs) you don't really want to be around them, right? If you have a really good idea and that person is like, no, you can't do that. Or why would you do that? Or that's going to be really hard or whatever. That's awesome to have a little bit of reality. But we don't need to just suck the fun out of absolutely everything, right? And I am like, I am the opportunist. I am the person that always sees the opportunity. I am the one that is like, well, if we can't do that, why? Let's figure out the solution. Let's fix it. And you guys have heard me talk about that a million times. If the bank's not, if the bank is telling you you can't do it, then fix it. How in the heck can we get away from them so we don't have to keep using them? Like, let's fix the problem. If we have a problem with suicide amongst farmers, Let's fix the problem. Let's stop it so we're not repeating it every 20, 30 years. Because we did this in the 80s. We're doing it again. How do we fix it? We fix it by handing the farm off differently. We fix it by not uh, buying things to avoid taxes and creating bigger debt, right? There are solutions to the problem, not just talking about the problem. And so these fun suckers are everywhere in our life. And Right now, they are out in mass. <laughs> it's, they're everywhere. And 
it's so funny because I have come across so many of them as of recent. And I just had somebody, I just posted this awesome post on my Facebook page. Those of you that are not following Farming Without the Bank on Facebook, please do. I do a lot, a lot of stuff on Facebook. So I posted this client conversation and I have this client who did a policy on their one-year-old, $1,200 a year premium, $1,200 a year. By the time that this child is in her 90s, I think it was like 92, we had a little over a million dollars of cash value. We have put in $108,000 of premium and she is going to have a million dollars of cash value, income tax-free to use, and death benefit that's more than a million dollars to pass on to the kids. So the parents, think about this, the parents are starting a policy for their grandkids and their child is only one if they should have grandkids and be so lucky, right? But think about that. They have already created something multi-generational, multi-generational people. This is amazing. I mean, obviously, I'm excited, right? This is absolutely amazing. And I am more excited about this than probably most policies I start. But wah, 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 here comes the fun sucker. And posts on the post, something about, well, let me just go in there and find it. I said that they're going to have a million at 92. What would a person do with a million dollars at that age? LOL right? I'm an idiot. And then he goes on to say, I'll pass. Because some other fun sucker says, pay estate tax on the land they leave to their grandchildren. Well, no, that guy I don't think was being a fun sucker. Pay estate tax on the land they leave to their grandchildren, right? So that guy probably got it. I'm not quite sure. I'm assuming so. But this guy, this fun sucker guy said, I'll pass. Oh, yeah, yeah. The other guy was being very nice about it. You can kind of read things two ways online. That's another bad thing. However, the fun sucker was being a fun sucker, okay? So he doesn't like it. Think about this. He is following my Facebook page just because he has nothing better to do? Like, this absolutely kills me. These fun suckers in life are so negative, and they are putting all of their time and energy into making sure that they can ruin somebody else's day instead of building their own business, instead of making themselves better, instead of doing all these other things. Now, I am pretty sure if you're listening to this podcast, you are not a fun sucker because you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't want to be learning. But we all have those people in life. Seriously, don't be a fun sucker. Don't be a keyboard warrior out there thinking that you're going to make somebody pissed off and you're going to create somebody, you're going to make a point and you're going to change somebody's mind online. It's not going to happen. And I am not going to sit back and allow it to happen on my page right? Because the people that are following Farming Without the Bank, 99.9% .9 of you guys are freaking amazing. You are wanting to learn. You are wanting to do better. You are looking for solutions. And the problem you have is the fun suckers in your life, the negative Nellies that say, we can't do that, right? Mom and dad, we can't do that. We can't do that. Figure out how to do it Get rid of those people and move on. I don't understand at some point how we get so angry about what's going on around us that we're going to wallow in that, that we're just going to sit there and, and just like it's a puddle of water and we're going to stand in it and it's 100 degrees outside and we're just going to focus on the fact that it's 100 degrees outside and we're so hot but yet we're standing in the darn water, cooling us off. And we've completely forgot about the opportunity and the little bit of gift we did get in the pond of water. Good heavens. Don't be that person. If we are not looking for opportunity, we are always going to be the victim. Always play the victim card. 
I also was talking with a friend and a friend. And it's very, it's awesome. I have friends that do not see things the same way I see them. There is nothing wrong with that. That doesn't mean they're bad people. It just means we can have a really nice conversation about how we see things and we can continue to be friends and never agree. People are taking, larger companies are taking the PPE money and some people are saying that's for small business. And I would 100% agree. It's for small business. But Small business is 500 people. Well, compared small business is compared to what? My business with two employees and a bazillion contractors, subcontractors, right? So I have three um I have three subcontractors that work for me for that I hire to do things and then I've got two employees and the other people I surround myself with, right? So I've got all these people that I work with, but I don't have 500 employees. But somebody that has no employees and just starting can say I'm a big business. So for me, is 500 employees a big business? Yeah, compared to me. But the small business loan was able to go to 500 people. So I can't be upset that somebody with 500 employees, if they truly were affected by COVID and they were able to take that money and they needed it, I can't say they shouldn't have got it because the rules say they can have it, right? Did they manipulate the situation and take it? I don't know, but the opportunity is there for all of us, all of us. If there is land for sale next door and you didn't buy it, could have you bought it? Was there an opportunity that you could have gotten some investors, you could have pulled your money together with somebody else and not just been independent to do that, right? I know a farmer that went from 3,000 acres to 7,000 acres. How did he do that? People just came and asked him to farm. He didn't go out beating down doors and begging people and taking the rug out from underneath other people. He didn't do any of that. Yet, I'm sure there are people in the community that are like, oh, he's a big-ass farmer, and that's not good, and look at him, and he doesn't need any more land. But yet, all the neighbors are watching and saying, you're a really good farmer. You're a really nice person. You didn't beg us for land. You're not out to screw anybody. So we're, we want you to farm our land. Would you do that? They are literally coming to him and he is not even asking for it. But yet on the other side of the fence, there's the negative Nelly, there's the fun sucker, there is the keyboard warrior that's going to say, oh, you know what? That's a bad guy. Come on, you guys. I'm on a bit of a rant. I'm just trying to get you to understand your thought process. And I say this all the time. Jealousy kills curiosity. Stop being jealous. Start asking questions. Start learning. You guys, I teach the infinite banking concept. I teach it, okay? I am not in real estate. I do not farm. For those of you that don't know, I don't hide the fact. I do not farm. My family farms. I know where I want my risks to be. I know what I have time to be good at. I am in meetings nonstop all day. Do you think that I would have time to be a successful farmer? Mm -mm. Nope, I would not. Because I am here helping you on the other side of that. So think about, I'm just challenging you. Next time you see somebody getting bigger. Next time you see something online that says X, Y, Z, is there proof to back that up? Are we logically thinking about something or are we just spouting off without thinking about anything? Because Lord knows I do enough spouting off, but I am learning at my wise old age (laughs) that I need to think about things before I need to do my investigation. And why? Because people have challenged me on things and I have had to go back and say, you know what? They're right. I was not in the right. 
to say that because the evidence didn't show it. I wasn't thinking correctly because there is opportunity everywhere. We all have the same opportunity. How we reach the same goal might not be the same. Somebody might get the farm given to them, but they still have to maintain it. They still have to make sure it's profitable. The next guy might have to build it from scratch. And if they are both operating the farms that they currently have and they're successful, kudos to them. They got there differently, but they're doing the same darn thing. Just because somebody got a farm doesn't mean that you can't farm. If you've never farmed a day in your life, it still means that you can learn how. Right? The other guy maybe learned from the time he was little. Dad was a mentor. Now I have to go find a mentor because I don't know anything about it. But that's okay because guess what? I get to find my mentor, the one that I got. It's not the God given mentor that I might have fought with for the last 40 years, but I get to choose the mentor that's doing it the way I would like to do it because I've done the research. It's just not how it's always been done. There are pluses and minuses to both sides. Don't just always look at it and say, oh, well, he got it. There's no way to do it without. Oh, they just got it handed to them in real estate. There's no way to do it without. They know all the right people. Well, how the heck do you think they know all the right people? They went out and met all the right people. I mean, we cannot look at the elite of this country and say, well, that's how they got there was through family and knowing all these people, right? There are tons of millionaires in this country that we do not know anything about that have never gone to college. Many dropped out of high school and are successful business owners. You know which ones I admire the most? Those people that struggled in high school. They had a learning disability. They had dyslexia right? They couldn't learn like the school system wants us to learn. And they figured out how they can learn and they've become successful. I did horribly in high school. Yes, I have a college degree. I could give a crap less about this college degree of mine. Those people did not get there the same as somebody else that got it handed to them. They maybe had to work harder, but guess what? They got there. And then there were a bunch of negative Nellies along the way and a bunch of fun suckers. Just stop and think about it. What you think about happens. And if you think you're getting the shaft, you're getting the shaft. You're going to continue to get the shaft. Negative things are going to continue to happen. And it is utterly amazing to me how many of my clients already think that way. They already think that way. I thought, Okay, I'm kind of crazy because I think this way. And then my, my clients who are successful and they are learning all the same stuff, they are listening to all the same stuff that I'm listening to, they're reading the same books because it's not just about working on the farm and what do I plant and what do I feed. It is also about making just as much education as you do with soil health and, and animal health right? And what tractor am I going to buy? And what's the best buy? Think about all the time you spend on that. How much time do you spend on yourself making yourself better? And how much time do you spend on business making your business better? I had a client this week that is in a farm mentor group or a mentor group. I have two farmers now that are in mentor groups. You know what is the same about them? They are learning from other people, which is absolutely amazing. Their farms are set up like businesses. Financially, those farms are doing well. I mean, there are other people that are doing well as well, and they're not necessarily in mentor groups, but they've learned that from somewhere. Why there are not more mentor groups for farming, I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea, but they are being asked for. I have people asking me all the time, where do I go? Where do I learn this? Just as I go to business mentoring groups and I do business coaching, so should farmers. It's a business. And if you think solution and possibility, you are going to get solutions and possibility. Nelson said, things will appear to those that are ready. Right? Why do people understand the infinite banking concept? Because they have been looking and they're ready. The teacher appears when the student is ready. 
Nelson always said, do not give me credit for sharing this concept. You were ready to learn it. This Yehu that's following me on Facebook because he has nothing better to do, and I have several of these Yehus complaining about how they don't have any money, yet they're on Facebook keyboard warriors. Like maybe if you got off of Facebook and worked, you would have money, right? Those people aren't ready to learn because they can't see it. They have completely arrived, as Nelson talks about in his book, The Arrival Syndrome. They have completely arrived. You guys, don't be that person. Open up your mind. Read things beyond soil health, tractors, pickups. What else is out there that allows us to think differently and open up our mind to expand our business, to expand our operation? It's huge. I think I'm going to have t-shirts made. Don't be a fun sucker. (laughs) Just like right now there's t-shirts that say, don't be a Karen or something, right? Don't be a Karen. And then there's a name for the guys too. Don't be the fun sucker because they come everywhere. Okay. I hope, I know most of you are already there, but if you're not, I do hope that that opened up your eyes a little bit to say, hey, you know what? I don't want to be that person. I don't want to shut that person down because why are we stopping people from growing? There's, there's reality, Don't get me wrong. I'm Miss Reality. There's reality, but then there's also just flat out saying it can't be done or this is stupid or whatever, right? Okay. Thanks for listening to the end. If you're still here, I applaud you. All right, guys. You have an absolutely fantastic day, rest of your week, and we will catch you again next week. Talk to you later. Thanks for listening to the Farming Without the Bank podcast. We hope today's episode has inspired you to take control of your finances in new ways. Don't forget to check out our website, farmingwithoutthebank.com, and engage with us on our Facebook page, Farming Without the Bank. Join us next week as we smash more financial myths and empower you to accomplish your financial goals.